Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about the ECDSA algorithm. ECDSA is short for Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm. A digital signature algorithm is used to verify the source of a message. So suppose a user A wants to send a message to B, A will use its own pub, uh, his or her pub, uh, private key to sign that message and then send it to B and B can use a public key to verify that the signature is valid so that uh, he knows that this message is actually from A. So now let's let's see how this algorithm works. Um, first, we're gonna choose some parameters. Um, first, we need an elliptic curve denoted as EPAB. And this is defined by an equation here. And this equation is defined over a finite field GFP. So GFP uh, is a Galois field um, which has P elements. And um, this curve is defined over GFP, which means the parameters uh, of this equation, x, y, a, b, um, are actually elements from this finite field. And um, then we're gonna choose a base point g of that elliptic curve and then get its public, uh, its multiplicative order n, uh, which means n times g equal to o. And uh, this operation here is actually scalar multiplication. Um, so we use an uh, integer times a point, and the result is also a point. If we represent in coordinates, we have two numbers to represent it. And O here is the identity element, uh, which is the point at infinity in that uh, elliptic curve. And um, so, um, um, here we need some actually some mathematical knowledge, so um, uh, you may need want to uh, you may need to check what is a finite field and uh, what uh, how does the scalar multiplication works and uh, uh, also how the um, uh, operations of uh, points in on the elliptic curve works. Uh, we will make a video in the future talking about these kinds of mathematics. So today we just focus on the digital al uh, digital signature algorithm. So now we are gonna set up the key pairs. So we choose an integer d which is between 1 and n minus 1. Uh, we treat it as the private key and then calculate q uh, as d times g well, uh, this is the public key. And uh, now we can use these keys to sign the message. So first, given a message M, we will calculate its Hashi value. Well, here, usually we use the SHA2 um, Hashi function. Um, one example is the SHA256, which we talked about in a previous video. Go check that if you're interested. And um, so we have the hash value of this message and we just use um, z which is ln bits of the hash value and uh, l and uh, then we ca we select a random integer k which is also between in this range and then we calculate um, an elliptic curve point x1 y1 and this is um, calculated by k times g. And um, then we calculate uh, r as the uh, x1 modulo n and uh, uh, another value s as the inverse of k times z plus r times d modulo n. Here k minus 1 is um, the inverse of k modulo n. Well, to calculate this number, we, we will need the extended Euclidean algorithm. We talked about it in the RSA algorithm. 
uh, we have a simple example uh, of that calculation. If you uh, you can check that video um, to see how this uh, extended Euclidean algorithm works. And uh, now, actually, we have the signature for the message M, which is the pair R and S. This is the um, uh, signature. And uh, here we uh, need to know that um, except for the public key Q, um, the information about curve is also public. So like the curve itself and also the base point which is and the multiplicative order n, and these are all public. And except for the private key D, the, um, uh, the number K which we select randomly um, are also kept secret. And um, then the sender can send the message together with this signature to uh, the receiver. So on the receiver side, he or she can verify this signature. So uh, the receiver will get the message and its signature RS. And first, uh, he will calculate the hash value and get Z from the received message and then calculate u1 as z times the inverse of s modulo n and u2 as r times the inverse of s modulo n. And then um, um, the receiver can calculate a point x1, y1 by uh, u1 times g plus u2 times q and then um, compare the result of this x1 um, uh, and use it to modulo n and get the result and compare it with the uh, signature r he or she received. And if this um, is valid, uh, if this e equation um, um, is valid, then the signature is also valid. Um, otherwise, the um, verification fails. And um, about the correctness of this algorithm, so here actually we can see the receiver only used the public key which is the number Q to verify the message. So the number K and also the secret key D are not used in the verification process. So let's check this equation here. So x1, y1 is from this equation that we first we a um, replace q by which is the pop key by d times g here we will get this this one will equal to this equation here so uh, we uh, write u1 as z times inverse of s and plus r times inverse of s and times d then times g and um, uh, we simplify it and get this this equation, we get the inverse of s uh, outside of the bracket. And um, uh, since the s is defined by this equation here, we use this to replace the s here. And finally, we will get the left side uh, will become k. So which means this point is equal to k times g. So which means it's also uh, the same as the one we calculate in the uh, this process so so that we can get x1 is will be equal to r so this is the correctness of this algorithm and, um, and in, like I just said we will uh, explain more about the uh, finite fields and uh, the uh, operations in the uh, elect elliptic curve uh, in the future and um, so thanks for watching see you next time mm -hmm.